The Stones' late guitarist Brian Jones is back in the news as the 40-year controversy surrounding his death has yet to be solved. Conspiracy theorists say that Jones was murdered back in 1969, but the question is, who was responsible? Now we're going to bring in a special guest. This is a man who has a different version of the events that took place the night Brian Jones died. Jeffrey Giuliano is the author of Paint It Black, The Murder of Brian Jones. He joins us from Bangkok, so thanks for being here with us tonight, Jeffrey. Now you claim to have the real story behind Brian's death, so tell us what happened. Well, look, uh, 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 when I was a kid, I was, uh, went over to spend a summer in Coventry, uh, England, and I, uh, I was 12 or 13, uh, quite young, but I was a little advanced for my age, and I met some older guys there, uh, hippie types, and amongst them a, a fellow called Thomas Patrick Gerard and a fellow known as Frank the Freak or Frank Stopchuk, and they uh, mentioned to me that they had met the Rolling Stones, but I was a Beatle man, so I wasn't too impressed with that, and even worked for, for Brian Jones. Uh, again, interesting, but not too impressed. Flip forward many years, I became quite a well-known rock biographer, had written many, many books. I was in London promoting my book, Blackbird, The Life and Times of Paul McCartney, staying at the Kensington Park Hotel, and Tom Gerard came to see me. I was happy to see him, and he said, look, I want to talk to you about Brian. What about Brian? Well, about Brian. It's confidential. Can we go in the room? So we went in the room. I put on the tape, and he began to tell me the strangest story, that he had been involved in the death of Brian Jones. Frank Thorogood was there. Frank Stopchuk was there, Frank the Freak. Tom Gerard was there. But choreographing the sequence of events that night was Tom Keelock, uh, the roadie for the Rolling Stones, the chauffeur, uh, who was uh, appointed as Brian Jones' minder. Now, people say, well, why, why would any of these people want to kill Brian Jones? There was a dumb movie based on this book that I wrote uh, that said it was because he owed him some money. Forget about it. It was, in my mind, from what I know, and I spent many, many years studying this, uh, this case, that Brian started the Rolling Stones. He put an ad in the in a newspaper saying, I want to, to audition musicians for my band, the Rolling Stones. He owned the name. Well, on uh, June 9th of 1969, after a lot of problems in the Stones, Charlie, Keith, and Mick came down and fired him from his band, which is ridiculous. And uh, in, on July 2nd, he was dead. I believe that Tom Keelock, in, in, in an attempt to ingratiate himself to his masters, not at the behest of the, the Rolling Stones, but to try to go up in the ladder, uh, he was an uneducated guy, he was a brute, a thug, he, he cooked up this plan to, to, to murder Brian Jones. And how did they do it? Tom Keelock told me how he did it. He said when he was in the Marines, they learned a technique where you pull someone backwards underwater and it fills their lungs up very quickly. That's why when Dr. Cyril Wecht and I work on this case together, um, we, th there's not a lot of uh, trauma to the body and there was certainly no drugs. The drugs had been metabolized. So right. these people that say, oh, Brian was a druggie, he was on drugs, he fell in the pool, not true. Sounds kind of wild. Sounds kind of like the Rolling Stones. Jeffrey, thanks for joining us with that exclusive. And up next